Welcome to Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 21st of September with me, Patrick Munday. After a brief short squeeze on the back of the FOMC meeting, the dollar looks as though it's settling back into a kind of benign decline that also allows risk assets to prosper. Uh, fresh on the heels of its latest policy decisions and communications, Fed is rolling out a wave of officials to provide further colour that may reveal more information on the range of opinions in support of the most recent statement. Chair Powell and Treasury Secretary Mnuchin will deliver their required quarterly testimony on the CARES Act before the House Financial Services Panel on Tuesday and the Senate Banking Committee on Thursday. Chair Powell will also speak for the House Select Committee on the COVID-19 virus. Uh, Governor Brainard will weigh in on Monday with Governor Quarles appearing on Wednesday. Several regional presidents will speak, including Williams, Evans, Barkin, Mester, Rosengren, Dali and Bullard. Uh, the data calendar itself is quite light, but uh, we will get August existing home sales. and They're expected to be strong following record low mortgage rates. From a technical perspective, dollar index, uh, like I say, really hasn't gone anywhere. We're still tracking a potential inverse head and shoulders scenario here, and I'm looking for ultimately a test of this 94, the uh, descending trend line resistance to as the, the premium opportunity to uh, re-engage the dollar on the short side. Um, only really a close below 92.30 would concern the corrective thesis, uh, suggesting a retest of the prior lows at 91.75, with the potential to test the descending projected channel support down to 90.30. Key focus uh, for the week ahead in terms of the Eurozone will be an update on the September confidence readings through the flash PMIs and the German EFO. The August data has softened from the sharp early summer recovery and the September data will provide insights on whether confidence continued to erode, especially in the services sector. These data are released on Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, if the euro can survive these, uh, then the market probably moves on to the EU summit on the 24th, 25th of September. Topics on the agenda include the EU's response to tension in the Eastern Mediterranean, <coughs> excuse me, and also to Russia. There are also suggestions that more detailed support for the EU capital market union will be presented. Uh, positive for the euro if it raises the prospect of a deeper pool of European securities to rival the dollar. From a technical perspective, euro dollar continues to hold this uh, 117 support area. Uh, I highlighted in uh, last week's live analysis session the $120 billion worth of options that uh, are, are looking to <coughs> contain the euro between 117 and 120. So as we hold 117 range support, we look for a test up uh, through the price cycle highs at one, uh, just above 120 to test now uh, ascending projected trend line resistance uh, just ahead of uh, 121. From there, we could see a more uh, pronounced correction back into the 116 support area before longs look to re-engage. However, if we do take out range supports at 117, then look for that uh, that 116 test as the, the pivotal area in terms of re-engaging the euro on the long side. Sterling price action will continue to be dominated by the UK uh, EU trade negotiation news flow. Uh, next round of talks taking place this week. Despite some softening in the prior harsh rhetoric, PM Johnson agreed to give Parliament a veto over some measures of the Internal Market Bill, while the European Council President von der Leyen said she was convinced a deal is possible. Continue to see downside risks to sterling as the odds of a no-deal Brexit are increasing, around 50% now, but not enough risk premiums priced into sterling, only around 1.5% uh, based on financial fair value modelling versus the 5% risk premium priced in in late June. This points to further sterling downside. Um, on the data front, uh, we get September UK PMI Wednesday. Given the Brexit risk and the increased probability of the BOE negative rates, uh, following the confirmation that the BOE discussed the effectiveness of negative interest rates during the September rate setting meeting. The UK PMI should have a limited impact on sterling. The prime driver of sterling remains the outlook for the UK EU trade negotiations. 
So with respect to sterling, um, we broke the ascending trend line support that we were tracking at the 128.50. Uh, we popped back up, but uh, Friday we've got a, a bearish reversal pattern and, uh, and we traded just below that ascending trend line support. Similarities in terms of the type of price action we saw uh, back in June here with the decline, uh, small corrective move up, and then that final low made um, into the back end of June, uh, 29th of June. So I think we can see a similar pattern here, uh, rollover, test this uh, 127 area of support now we've got the prior resistance to act as support we also have uh, the monthly s3 coming in there so watch that 127 area if we do roll over here in sterling i think that could be an area where we could see a more pronounced correction develop Dolly Yen has typically not been, uh, spent much time below 105 over the past uh, five years, but pressure is certainly building for a move lower over the coming months. Uh, things like negative real US yields, uh, perhaps soft banks repatriate, uh, repatriation of its divestment of arm uh, proceeds, and potentially even um, the Dolly Yen being seen as a key vehicle to hedge US election risks. Um, one could also make the, the case that the community of, uh, or the continuity, sorry, of Arbonomics and the BOJ upgrading domestic growth forecasts is positive too. Local calendar is very light this week, uh, just the release of the BOJ uh, July minutes. So from a technical perspective, as we hold this double bottom here now at the 104.20, look for a pop higher back into this prior support at the 105.30, 105.50. This is the area where I'd be looking at uh, re-engaging the dolly in on the short side, looking for bearish reversal patterns, ultimately targeting a move down to, uh, to take a look at 103 as the next downside objective. Finally, in Australia, the Aussie has really continued to hover around this, uh, this 7 to 3 level all of last week, where employment data proved uh, way less pessimistic than expected, both by surveys economists and by the RBA government projections. Still, the lockdown measures in Victoria are likely keeping investors cautious about the Aussie, as a downturn in economic data down the road could be a trigger for more RBA easing, possibly with the additional aim of weakening the Aussie dollar. Stabilising risk sentiment this week and the inability of the dollar to stage any sustainable uh, significant rebound could see the, the Aussie find support early in the week. On the calendar side of things, retail sales for August will be the key release to watch, while PMI should have a limited market impact. Also keep an eye on the RBA DeBell speech on Tuesday and potential spillover from any surprising move by the PBOC, uh, which, uh, which it doesn't really seem likely at this stage. So from a technical perspective, and like I say, Aussie dollar holding this 72.50 as it does, still see the potential for a test of 75. We'd have significant momentum divergence to address by then. I'd be watching for bearish reversal patterns from that 75 area to set up a test back down into the support at the 70 handle. Now, um, if we do uh, early in the early in the week roll over here and we take out that 72.30, 72.20 support area, then we could see that uh, that 70 test come uh, come sooner. Um, that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 21st of September. Be sure to join me on Thursday for a live market analysis session where I'll be updating all the charts and, uh, and trading opportunities. Thanks very much for your time and have a great week.